Hello ladies and gentlemen, the Indian guy from Heroes here. And I don't have a hat, your boy is getting more confident. Today I am going to be talking about Ray William Johnson. He was the most subscribed to channel on all of YouTube at its peak. He became famous with the show Equals 3 and was even in a comedy band called My Favorite Martian. However, he got into a contract dispute with Maker Studios and shifted his focus from Equals 3 to other passion projects which resulted in his downfall. Are you looking for a fun new mobile shooter game to play that's actually good? Well I have just the one for you, Mech Arena. It's a new casual mobile shooter and it's great for just picking up and blowing off steam. It's a lot of fun to just play a short game or two, fire some weapons, and operate a cool mech. Mech Arena is really simple to understand and each game is just a few minutes long which makes it perfect to play for just a quick break. And trust me, anyone can play, you don't need to be an expert at it to have some fun. You use the button on the left to advance and accelerate and you shoot with the trigger button on the right. This makes moving around and firing super intuitive. My favorite mech to play with is the Paragon mech because it has an extremely high speed and power. I can get around, shoot, and run away with ease. Mech Arena is super fast paced which makes me feel excited and gives me a huge adrenaline rush. The matches are brief but action packed so it's overall a fun experience. Also you need very little time to play, just pick up your phone and hop in and out of a match. You can honestly play an action packed game from start to finish in 5 minutes. In addition, the maps are smaller and tighter, allowing for fast action tactics and constant encounters. Also, Mech Arena isn't a reflex first person shooter, but at the same time doesn't feel slow like most mech games. There's a ton of events happening in-game right now, all throughout the month, where you can get a bunch of awesome weapons, including Mech Arena's hottest new weapon, the Disc Launcher. On top of that, there's a bunch of special Halloween events to take part in and some extra special Halloween skins to win. It's completely free to play on Android and iOS right now, and you can use my personal link or scan my QR code to get one forest digital skin, 200 8 coins, and 10,000 credits to help kickstart your game. And if you're quick, you can add me at Internet AJ with ID 22009952 and we can play some games together, so don't wait and download it now. Again, Mech Arena is completely free and it's a great way to pass the time for a few minutes during a break. Each download supports the channel and it's of no cost to you, so please get it now to help me out. Now back to the video. Ray William Johnson created his YouTube channel on May 26, 2008 in his college dorm room at Columbia University. He then started a series called Equals 3 in which he reviewed viral videos and provided commentary. His first video was called I Will End You and was uploaded on May 9, 2009. If you had the ability to kill one person and get away with it, who would you kill and why? Is it just me, or does that guy seem like he really wants to murder someone? Please answer that creepy guy's question before he comes to my apartment. Viewers immediately liked Ray's snarky observations and the roast-like quality of his content which inspired him to make more videos. After less than 10 uploads, Johnson hit his big break when he released a video called Don't Call Me Fat. In it, he showed a woman doing the percolator then crashing through a glass table. I am f***ing great. Oh, f***ing <laughs> Go ahead, girl, dance. Do the percolator. Get up on that glass table and show us how it's done. Chris, you ready for this? Oh, we're ready. Show us how to percolate, girl. It's time for the percolator. <laughs> it's time for the percolator. <laughs> All right. You're stepping in Pepsi. But I'm not gonna want. <laughs> Into my oh damn! Wait, the glass went into her what? They went into my yeah, the video cuts off right there. So for him, the glass went into her what? I think it stuck directly into her self-esteem. What's funny is that even though she's not really fat, from this point on her friends are gonna refer to her as that stupid bitch who got drunk and did the percolator on top of a glass table. It also featured an obese guy freaking out. Fat! Gay! Idiot! Dumbass! What the f***? If you really think that I'm a fat asshole, then why the f do you take your time to comment on my video? All right, chill out, man. Dude, you know what you should do when you're feeling upset? It's time for the percolator. It's time for the percolator. <laughs> I actually remember watching that video not long after it came out and it got me hooked on Equals 3. And that was the case for a lot of people. The video spread as fast as my Tinder date's legs and has over 25 million views as of today. It helped bring a lot of traffic to Johnson's channel, making it a hit. And as it grew, so did his production quality. In no time, he upgraded his background from a boring brick wall to the iconic one we all know, a room plastered with so many comic book pages it would make an incel jealous. 
In March 2010, less than one year after creating his channel, he reached 1 million subscribers. His success was so prolific, he actually dropped out of college to pursue YouTube full-time. Johnson posted consistently, and each episode was of extremely high quality. This allowed him to build a strong relationship with his audience and made Equals 3 just like a regularly scheduled TV program. In fact, each video averaged between 3 and 10 million views, which was multiple times his subscriber count, indicating the massive reach of the show. Ray was incredibly innovative and ahead of his time. He was the PewDiePie before PewDiePie and was the first channel ever to hit 5 million subscribers. In fact, he became the most subscribed to a YouTube channel from June 25th, 2011 to January 12th, 2013 until he was overtaken by Smosh. His formula for success was novel. Johnson employed a genius strategy. He used the success of already viral videos which attracted viewers, but also injected his own personality which got them to stay and subscribe. Due to his rapidly growing channel, Ray decided to sign with the YouTube network Maker Studios which was later acquired by Disney in 2014. Interestingly, it was the same network Stampy Long had worked with to make his animated series Wonder Quest which ironically was one of the reasons for his downfall. Sadly, the same would be true for Johnson. Initially, things were great. Maker Studios flew Ray out from New York City to Los Angeles and gave him a studio to film in. They also provided him with a production staff for Equals 3. This was new for Johnson as he was literally a one-man show before his deal with Maker. With the help, Ray continued pumping out high-quality videos and expanded his internet presence further. In addition, Maker's Hollywood connections allowed him to collaborate with celebrities like Robin Williams, Jason Biggs, and even me. They also worked with Johnson and launched his band called Your Favorite Martian in 2011. The band made comedy rap songs and the music videos were completely animated. It was a big passion project for Ray as he wanted to do more things outside of making YouTube videos. The songs did very well and accumulated tens of millions of views. In fact, Your Favorite Martian sold 1.2 million units on iTunes without any record label or major promotion at all. That's quite impressive if you think about it. I mean, my hit single, Curry Porn Boy, still has zero plays. Unfortunately though, things soon came crashing down. Johnson said the turning point was when Maker Studios CEO Danny Zappin outright told him he was a convicted felon. Ray wrote this post himself on New Media Rockstars. I'm not sure as to why he confessed to having an alleged criminal record, but this is not something I was informed of prior to signing with them, and it may have influenced my decision had I known beforehand. Things then got worse when Maker Studios informed Ray they wanted to renegotiate his contract eight months before it ended. At first, he reluctantly agreed, but was forced to turn down the offer when Zappin demanded 40% of his ad revenue and 50% of his intellectual property. Negotiations went back and forth for weeks and inevitably turned sour and toxic. Things got so bad, Ray posted a text the CEO of Maker sent him on Facebook. It said, Just got this text now at 1am from Maker Studios CEO Danny Zappin himself. See what I'm dealing with. Cool. Your lack of integrity and character are sad. F you. Prepare for war, bitch. Besides Jesse Pinkmaning Ray, Zappin also blocked My Favorite Martian from releasing their album. The YouTube channel was then renamed to This Project Is Retired. Soured from the situation, Johnson posted a video called Ray William Johnson Retires from the Equals 3 Show 2014 on March 12, 2014. In it, he stated he was retiring from Equals 3 because it no longer fulfilled him creatively. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this to illustrate that I feel like I've done everything cool that there is to do in this medium and I've had a ton of success and it no longer feels gratifying. Yeah, I know, it makes me sound like a spoiled bitch and I'm gonna be really candid here and say this. I'm the kind of person who has to keep moving forward and has to keep being creative or I get depressed. I'm just being 100% honest here. Like this show isn't fulfilling me creatively anymore and I have to move on. He then revealed he wished to end the show but due to pushback from fans decided to keep it going with a new host. And Kumar, we had Romney Malko and Snoop Dogg wasn't on the show but he did stop by the studio one day to say what's up. Yeah, and for the record, I'm a normal sized human. Snoop is just a really tall guy. Now I'm sure there are more celebrities than what I just named uh, but I had to go through like five years of material to find that list. So forgive me if I left anyone out. I also wanna take a moment to thank anyone who's ever helped me behind the scenes or just helped me with the show in any way at all. So thank you to those people. And again, I had to go through five years of material to find all those names. So if I accidentally left your name out and you helped with the show, my sincerest apologies. Okay, so let's get to it. So what is the fate of Equals 3, the show? Well, originally I wanted to retire the show completely. It's actually still what I want, but I've gotten so much pushback from you guys and people around me that I'm gonna try to keep the show going. But here's the dildo. In order to do that, I'm gonna have to hire a new host, which means that I'm gonna have to shut the show down completely for about a month or two while I cast this new host. I just want it to be someone who's really good, someone who you guys will really like and connect with, and ideally, someone who hosts the show better than me. After a brief hiatus to hold a private audition, Ray announced Robbie Motts as the new host of Equals 3. Robbie was introduced to viewers by Jenna Marbles in a video called The Resurrection, which was posted on July 16, 2014. 
Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jenna Marbles. I'm so excited that Equals 3 is back on the air. I want to introduce you to your new, adorable, beautiful host, Robbie Motts. <laughs> Thanks, Jenna. I'm Robbie Motts, and you don't know me yet. I've done some theater and some improv, but I'm just a guy who auditioned. I auditioned, and apparently Ray liked me the best out of like a thousand people, so I get to do this, which is incredible. I get to entertain you guys, and I gotta say, I'm nervous. I'm gonna compare myself to Ray. You guys are gonna compare me to Ray. I don't know what's gonna happen, but this is... Awesome, it's exciting. So I've never done anything like this before in my life, but hey, let's take this journey together, right? Although there was a noticeable decline in viewership without Johnson as host, Robbie was still well received by fans. He had a similar comedic style to Johnson, which made him a great fit. The show was still sustainable and averaged about 1 million views per video. However, after Robbie's one year contract expired, it was not renewed. Instead, Ray announced a new host named Kaja Martin was taking over. This led to speculation from fans that there was animosity between the three, but Robbie stated on his personal channel that it was just the best decision at the time. I know a lot of you guys have been asking this, why am I leaving Equals 3? Like, did something happen? What happened? Nothing actually happened. I think a lot of people want there to be some kind of drama between like Kelly, me, and Ray or something weird like that. The truth is, yes, no. <laughs> it was just my one year contract was over and so Ray and I sat down, we had a good conversation about the future of the show and the channel and what I see for myself and my future and we decided it'd be best to pass off the torch now. So like nobody got burned here. Like we're all good, Every everyone's good, we're great, it's just, this is the next thing. Sadly though, Kaja was downright terrible as a host and Ray's audience did not like her. In Kaja's first video, and the new host is, she made odd comments about white people and her jokes fell completely flat. This white guy Pete Hegseth throws his ax over the bullseye and straight into the marching band drummer. Dude. This reporter has perfect aim. He hit that drum right in the center. How dare anyone say white people aren't good at sports. I'm Kaja Martin, I approve the- Okay, yeah, that's supposed to be the end. Let's- <laughs> As a result, the video received 92,000 dislikes and only 48,000 likes. Her other videos also received nearly as many dislikes as views. After only five months, Kaja was replaced by the final host of Equals 3, Carlos Santos. Funnily enough, one of the comments on Kaja's goodbye video described her tenure best. I am sad Kaja is leaving. I really like disliking her videos. Carlos first appeared in a video called Welcome to Carlos in December 2015. Carlos's comedic style was extremely similar to Johnson's and the comments reflected his overall positive reception. However, it was already too late. Due to the constantly changing hosts and Ray William Johnson's obvious loss of interest in Equals 3, the show had taken a massive hit. You see, when the creator of a series openly admits they lost passion for their work, it usually leads to its inevitable death. Some examples of this are when Sky Does Minecraft told his audience he didn't want to play Minecraft anymore, or when Ice Poseidon no longer wanted to make his old IRL content. Unfortunately, the same was the case for Ray William Johnson's Equals 3. By the time Carlos arrived, the show was only getting a few hundred thousand views, which was 10% of what it used to get. That, coupled with production costs, likely made the project unviable. To make matters worse, in March 2016, Ray was also forced to settle a court case brought up by Juke and Media because he used their clips in Equals 3. Due to everything, the show abruptly ended without warning with the final episode on May 13, 2016. There was no goodbye or thank you to fans. Ray then branched out into other mediums and created multiple online shows, had a television concept purchased by FX, and even starred in a live action indie film called Who's Driving Doug. He also founded a production company called Mom and Pop Empire, which worked on the film Manson Family Vacation and was later picked up by Netflix. However, after his career outside of social media failed to materialize, Ray then returned to his YouTube channel in December 2019. Notably, due to his absence, his subscriber count dipped from 10.8 million to under 10. Luckily, YouTube doesn't take back plaques. Ray created a new YouTube series called Superhuman and hoped to help people with anxiety and depression by giving advice and talking about pop culture. The show was positively received but ended in February 2020 after 10 episodes. In an interview on the Impulsive podcast in March 2020, Ray revealed some very personal information for the first time on camera. For example, he talked about his experience living with his abusive father when he was 13. So when I was 13 years old, I was fighting with my mom a lot, just a single mom, and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like have a relationship with my dad. I'm trying to go live with my dad. That's gonna be cool. This guy was a drunk, like a really bad alcoholic. So he was an addict. He smoked weed all the time, which is not a huge deal, except that he never had a job the entire time I was there, nor did he have one years before or after. Damn, he lived man. off his, he mooched off his girlfriend who actually did have a job. Yep. Um, he did a lot of meth. And when I say he was abusive, he would smack around his girlfriend 
and my half sister who was from a different family, right? So she lived there too. So he would smack them around, like get super drunk and violent. He, I remember one day he picked up a, like one of those big ass mason jars of loose change and threw it at his girlfriend's head, like full of change. You know how heavy that is? And it's shattered on the wall. He took a, uh, like a, a wooden broom and he speared it through the wall, throwing it at his girlfriend. Holy shit. Like speared it into the sheetrock. Like dude was super violent, right? Yeah. And I was young enough to know, like I watched, he was never abusive to me. Ray also said that after his drunk father hit on his stepsister, he vowed to never talk to him again. So she goes to introduce her fiance to him. And my dad was like fallen over drunk. And he knew she was coming. This wasn't a surprise yeah. visit. And he's so wasted that he hits on her. Like he made a pass at his own biological daughter in front of her fiance. And her fiance, I think, almost kicked his ass. But, I, but again, it was just another story that I was like, I'm never talking to this guy again. Ray then stated he refused to see him after he was diagnosed with cancer. Notably, he mentioned his father died about a month later. I get a call from my mom. My mom's like, hey, uh, I just want you to know I got an update on your dad that you want to hear. I'm like, all right, wh whatever, mom. What is that low life doing? She's like, well, he has cancer. And... You know, I'm like, oh, Jesus, that's, wow, you know, my bad. I didn't, I was kidding. I didn't know. She's like, yeah, it's really bad. It's like spread to his, you know, his lungs and his liver and I think his jaw. So by the time he went to the doctor, it was like everywhere. And, and he's got about a month or two to live. And I was like, wow, that's, that's crazy. I didn't know what to say. And she's like, yeah, and he wants to see you. And. After all that, everything that I had been through, I couldn't say yes. I had to say no. I, I can't. And about a month later, he died. Johnson ended by explaining that these experiences made him realize he didn't want to be like his father and wanted to help other people. This was noble and gave people insight as to why he left Equals 3. It also explained why he made the Superhuman series. Moving on, Johnson released more music with a new cartoon band, The Upside Downs. He also moved to TikTok and tapped back into his roots by making videos in which he roasts other TikTokers. Currently, he has 4.4 million followers. Interestingly, he uploads the less than one minute TikToks as shorts on YouTube and now gets between one and 10 million views on them. And for the first time in years, his channel has gone back over the 10 million subscriber mark. Ultimately, Ray William Johnson skyrocketed to fame with Equals 3, which solidified his status as an OG of the YouTube community. He was the first YouTuber I ever watched consistently and I was a huge fan of the show. Sadly though, due to shifting passions and issues with Maker Studios, Ray stepped down as host of Equals 3. After jumping from host to host and losing a lawsuit to Juke and Media, Ray decided to abruptly end the show. He then dabbled in film and television but couldn't seem to make anything stick. Although the charismatic man with three names disappeared for years, he has now returned. Currently, Ray is making music and posting TikToks and YouTube shorts. I truly hope he is fulfilled creatively and is happy. Ray will always be a YouTube OG and inspired countless people in the YouTube community, including myself. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. Oh, and feel free to follow me on Twitter or Instagram at internetajit. See you in the next one.